What's going on YouTube and cryptocurrency family? My name is Harry and I'm the Crypto Vet. Thank you for tuning back in. Uh, I know there's some big news today about potentially Facebook and some Bitcoin. Unfortunately, that did not pan out. So today we're going to take a, another quick look at uh, XRP, Bitcoin and Ethereum because Ethereum is potentially setting all time highs, maybe leading the way for an alt season. Um, then I'm going to go over two bonus coins. So uh, please uh, stick around till the end um, if you want to see those or you can go ahead and skip to the bottom because I'll have timestamps down there. But if you haven't already, please like, please subscribe super close to a thousand subs um, appreciate you guys so so much if you haven't already follow me on twitter at xrp veterinarian uh, links for twitch discord and all the other goodies are down below so let's go ahead and get started here if we look over to coin market cap let me turn this one off real quick if we go over here to coin market cap and um, we can see that we have a little bit of red um, in the top five coins here, um, but not much, just possible slight corrections or consolidations here. Um, if we check up at the top, we have our coin market caps at over $2 trillion overall for Bitcoin and all the cryptocurrencies as a whole. And our Bitcoin dominance is still falling, which is exactly what we were looking for, for when we should potentially scale a little bit out of Bitcoin, go into altcoins, ride them bad boys up. And then for most, they take out of the alts and go back to Bitcoin. Um, for me, um, I capitulate and then the rest I actually put into fiat so that way I can buy dips. Um, sometimes I go back into Bitcoin, but if we look at the top gainers here, most of these coins actually took a big hit when Bitcoin dropped a little bit earlier today. But we can see Dogecoin potentially front running here with um, news that the Doge father, Elon Musk, actually, let me see if I can even find that tweet. It was somewhere over here on the right hand side trending earlier today. I don't see it, but um, yeah. And then there's news in May he's going to be on Saturday Night Live and he could potentially pump it up more. Whatever the case may be, um, I still think that Dogecoin is just a meme coin. Same with Shiba, Akita, SafeMoon, all these other ones, you know, but that doesn't mean you can't make money off of them. So just, um, you know, go in with your own risk and comfort level. Remember, um, I'm just a doctor slash idiot, and this is not financial advice. Um, as far as the biggest losers today, we can see Zillica, Waves, Hot, which has been on, Hot's been fucking hot. It's been pumping like crazy. VeChain, all with small corrections after having usually pretty good gains. But if we head over here to Bitcoin Dominance, we are about to break the 50 on trading view, which to me was the key level that we would start to see a much faster drop and decline in Bitcoin Dominance. So I'm keeping a close, close eye on this, and um, we'll see as, as as this goes down if we'll start to see some capitulation in the altcoin so just guys keep a, keep an eye on this because the last time we dropped below this level we had a very very big alt season for cryptos and we can see back here uh the time before that was right around june july um in 2017 and we're going to go over those time periods back in time for both Bitcoin, XRP, and Ethereum to kind of see where they lie all together. Um, if we head over here to Bitcoin chart we can see that back in the past we've bounced off of the 13 and the 20 weekly exponential moving average we've usually had good bounces um, this also coincided with the RSI touching all the way down to the 30 um, I've gone over this several times in my other videos so we're just going to touch on it real quick because every time we come up and bounce off of these we've almost always gotten rejected on the 20 daily exponential moving average which is the teal line whoops looks like I have two of the same moving average on there let's get rid of one of those there we go and you can see we pretty much always get rejected at least a little bit before we actually break through and this is on the daily so if we look at where we are right now you can see that we came down we found support on the 13 weekly exponential moving average we didn't come down to the 20 weekly like i would prefer however we have come up and we can see that we're getting rejected right now at the point of control um, as well as at the 20 daily exponential moving average and right now there's indecision here we're trying to figure out if we want to get over or not but the last time this happened here in 2017 as well um, in july both in september as we came up we danced around it for one to two days broke through or in this case we came up with a big green candle got rejected took two or three days found support down below on the 13 weekly and then came back up to move to higher numbers. Now, what's gonna happen here? Personally, I think we're gonna go down a little bit more, um, but that doesn't mean that that's gonna happen. Uh, some of the things that we have here that are a little different from back then is here we had um, one high, two high, but our RSI was matched both times. We came up, came up kind of like a double top, and then we corrected all the way down. 
Something different here is we have a high, a higher high, a higher high, and a higher high, whereas on the RSI we have lower highs going down. This is showing a bearish divergence. These don't always play through, um, but it's just something to keep in the back of your mind that there's actually a little bit of exhaustion from the buyers and that the bears might have an advantage in price action in the short term. So if we come here and we bounce down and then we come up again, if we can get back above this RSI trend line here, that could be the sign that, okay, we're finally played out. We've traded sideways long enough to exhaust the bearish divergence. So uh, personally, I think we are going to come back down here and potentially retest down in the, the $50,000 range for Bitcoin. But, you know, this here is one of those things that I don't trade. I sit back and wait for everyone to decide, get on the same page um, and then go from there. If we look at this here on the hourly, we can see that we've been in this upwards trend setting higher highs. And then it wasn't until we touched this 20 daily exponential moving average that we got rejected, started to kind of W out, looked like we were going, you know, this is everyone's getting a boner that it was going up. And then supposedly the Facebook news of them not buying Bitcoin is what caused this dump. I don't like to pin news to the charts. I think personally that this was just a lot of seller volume because look at this coming up. Well, obviously a lot of seller volume, but this is just normal um, TA and normal um, technical analysis here this was just a spot with lots of resistance so people sold off here it may be overextended due to news because if a bunch of people saw that news wasn't happening and decided to sell that could have made the cascade worse but i think something like this would have happened regardless of that event you know so this pump to the upside could have been people getting a little overzealous then the bad news that could be why we came back down but in the end i think this same similar pattern would have happened we would have got rejected right around the 20 daily exponential moving average just because it's not quite ready we need either more sideways action or we need a lower price one or the other to just kind of reset everything and prove that this is where bitcoin's price should be so right now we do have maybe a little symmetrical triangle forming so you know a break above this and holding we could see a pump to the upside that gets us close to 57.5 ish um, or a break to the downside we could be seeing a retest of this trend line around 49 to 50,000 where we do have a lot of this volume so for right now i'm sitting back waiting again if this was uh, a bigger pattern at play we could have like a big head and shoulders forming here and either way our next price is going to be up around 65 to 68 thousand dollars our previous all-time high as well as getting back into the same pattern that we were previously now looking at ethereum um, ethereum could have a couple things going on here we do have this like broadening um megaphone forming here um, but we are also following a lot of the price action for bitcoin if we look at ethereum against bitcoin here we can see ethereum is doing well it's outperforming bitcoin at the moment um, it is currently setting an all-time high as i record this and it is above the 20 daily exponential movie average in new territory whereas bitcoin is struggling to get above it now so this decoupling of price action could signify that this is the moment when um, the alt season does occur. So, you know, when it comes to Bitcoin dominance, Ethereum is going to be the biggest player as far as decreasing the dominance of Bitcoin. It has the largest market cap except for Bitcoin. You no, know, behind them would be BNB and XRP, which are drastically lower than Ethereum. So, the more money that goes into Ethereum, the lower the Bitcoin dominance goes. And we can see here that we've already dropped 0.1 since I started recording this video. So, going back to Ethereum and where it can go, well, it it really doesn't it just depends on where people want to take it and i think the next big resistance is going to be right at three thousand dollars because that's the next big even um, but if we did just measured moves and fib lines we could potentially take this up to around 32 to 32 50. Um, but for right now uh, ethereum is in price discovery but the next spot here just definitely in the short term is going to come right up around the 2900 to three thousand dollar level just because that's going to be where our upwards resistance is as well as the big even uh, one problem that i'm worried about is, is if bitcoin does drop this will devalue ethereum and we could see ethereum come back down to test these levels again before going up especially since here just on the momentum waves with market cipher we can see anytime we've had big red dots, the next couple of hours or next couple of candles play out to the bad, to the downside. And right now we are right here. We actually turned it back to green, but that means we could have a quick pump and then drop back to the downside. So right now, best time 
in my opinion, is to just accumulate Ethereum. Um, or if you want, you can do breakout trades right now, but just make sure as you get money, take it out. Don't try to ride this thing to 10 grand on 50x leverage because I guarantee you it'll correct low enough within these candles to get you out of those trades. So last, let's go ahead and look at XRP. XRP right here in the short term is going along with Bitcoin and trying to break out. When uh, Bitcoin decided to pump up, it dumped immediately and of course XRP followed it. The great thing about XRP right now is it's holding really, really strong here. Um, on the point of control, as far as this whole pattern goes, it's holding very, very good within this zone where there's a lot of traded volume. It's above the 0.382 FIB line and potentially could be forming again a little head and shoulders. You could call this maybe a little cup and hitting the speed in the handle. Either way, we need to wait for it to break this upper resistance here before I'm going to start going long. Um, you know, and I really want to see it truly decouple from Bitcoin before I start longing. So right now I'm just accumulating whatever little extra I get during these dips. We definitely could see it come right back down to this 20 daily, which would be around the 120 to 125 range. Um, and then potentially go up or we could see something very bearish where we actually come back down to the dollar again and we stay here before we actually have a blast off. If we look at Bitcoin, XRP, and Ethereum all against Bitcoin, we can see that back in 2017 here, right during April is when we actually had sideways to negative price action right in here. And what happened first? Ethereum actually led the way right at the end of April, 27th to the 28th, which ironically enough is the 28th today. And as Bitcoin stayed sideways up and down, but not very much price action, we saw Ethereum actually go up. And then by May 1st to May 3rd, we started to see some price action with XRP, XRP being the lagging one behind. But Bitcoin then started to actually trend upwards a little bit in May, and it wasn't until right at May 18th or whatever, uh, XRP saw its high for the month. And then Ethereum and Bitcoin continued up while XRP corrected all the way into June. So my, my goal of going over this was is back in 2017, Ethereum actually led the way for the altcoins during that time. And XRP lagged a little bit behind it. And just like I said, just ironically enough, it ends up being the exact same day that it is today just four years ago. So, um, you know, take it for what it is. You know, these altcoins are getting ready to pop in their valuation to Bitcoin. And exactly four years ago today started the rally was Ethereum, just like it is happening right now. So um, not sure what that's actually going to play out or if that's actually going to happen. But, you know, be sure to keep an eye on that because right now Ethereum is setting all time highs as I record this video. And XRP is slowly creeping its way back up. Once we get above the $1.41, $1.42 range and we actually build some support above this trend line, I'll potentially start entering in some longs. So the last things I want to talk about, the little bonus coins, is I want to talk about Cardano and I want to talk about KuCoin. So if we look at Cardano, Cardano is in a weird place. We have the previous pattern that we were in that we almost broke out of before we had all the Bitcoin dumpage and whatnot. Um, Cardano has now gotten back above the 20 daily exponential moving average and is almost back into the original upwards trend line that we had. So I'm looking to see if Cardano can get back up to around 135, 136, stay up there, and then, you know, maybe look like it's in a big ascending triangle. And then we could see a break to the upside, which could be absolutely massive and get us up to over $2 to 15 in price. So just keep your eye out on Cardano, waiting to see what it is. If you haven't invested in it, I think Cardano is a great project. Charles Hoskins in the founder, it was the one of the co-founders of Ethereum, very, very intelligent guy and um, worth looking out for him and his project. Uh, the last one is actually KuCoin. I talked about this one in one of my previous videos and I actually, we were in the triangle up here when I bought in, fortunately it did drop below when we had all the bad um, or negative price action from Bitcoin, but it recovered very, very well and it's now holding very steady, steady on the 0.382 FIB line and is potentially about to break above this um, resistance right here. And the reason why I want to say pay a bunch of attention on this is not just the immediate short term technical analysis, but just overall the project of KuCoin. So KuCoin is actually 
where's that chart is actually the number five spot exchange in the world based off of volume with 1.5 billion dollars worth of volume um, behind only behind kraken uob coinbase and binance um, a lot of people are using binance pancake swap and the bnb token to transact on that network because of the low transaction fees and high speeds right well kucoin is planning to do the same thing with their kucoin token bnb is currently um, valued at over 500 dollars but six to eight months ago it wasn't it was valued at around 50 dollars well so kucoin is just lagging behind bnb could be very very much worth it to potentially invest in this early because their kucoin community chain the kcc so which would be similar to the the bep2 chain is actually testnet has been launched and we could be seeing a lot of these new projects be launching on kucoin um, if there's enough partnership and build up. And of course, they're behind Ethereum and they're behind BNB. So it could take some time, but um, getting in at a price of, you know, $13 per coin right now uh, could prove to be very, very beneficial. In the short term, we could see a pump up or an increase all the way up to around $27, $28, which would be a nice 2x on a safe investment, in my opinion. So that's going to do it for this video. We're going to keep an eye on the markets and see um, what happens, what's going to keep going on. But um, for right now, I do think that we're going to see a lot of good price action from XRP and Ethereum, as well as a lot of the other altcoins, as long as Bitcoin can, where's the chart, where's it? as long as Bitcoin can hold here, and if it does drop, doesn't drop too fast, because if it drops too fast, that could throw everything off on the other ones, but if it starts to just steadily go down, steadily go up, the altcoins will decouple and start to do their own thing, so I'll catch you guys in the next one.